of those two points, I would like to share with you my personal memories of two events from the remote past. <laughs> we first met in November of 1963 at the Lick Observatory. Bob of the other at that time was already a professor at the astronomy department of the University of California in Berkeley and was coming to Mount Hamilton regularly to use the 120 inch telescope and the famous Crossley reflector. Even on Mount Hamilton some nights are cloudy and on one such cloudy night we sat in my room and waiting for weather to improve thought about practically everything, even about astronomy. <laughs> and Bob was telling me about his latest work on the planetary nebula in the globular cluster M15. We heard about this already in the morning when Will Tembert mentioned that paper. Paper appeared next year, 1964. And as you can see, there were two co-authors. And you were Campbell, who was at that time a graduate student in Berkeley, and Tom Kinnaman from the Big Observatory, who was at it, I think, because he contributed some plates. Am I right? Now, most of you are too young to remember. Fifty years ago, the common belief was but in the beginning, there was only hydrogen. And part of this belief was that the oldest stars in the galaxy, population two objects, such as those in the globular clusters, should have practically no helium. That was the party line. And here was a paper saying, no, this is not true. And the quotation you can read on the screen comes from the abstract of that important paper. As Manuel already mentioned this morning, a year later, the background, the background radiation was discovered. Other discoveries followed. And within a few years, we all knew that Odell, Pember, and Kimman were right. Bob Odell came to Poland for the first time in 1971. He gave seminars in Warsaw and in Toronto, but the main purpose of his trip was related to something else. It was connected with the forthcoming 500th anniversary of the birth of Nicolaus Copernicus. Earlier that year, the National Academy of Sciences created a special committee for celebrating this anniversary. It 
consisted of six prominent American scientists listed here. Did I miss someone? Six of them? Yes. Okay. Sometime later, I had an opportunity to talk to Professor Antonio Zygmunt, and he told me that although he was the chairman of that committee, its real spiritus moments was Bob Odell. And it was on his initiative that this committee decided to recommend to the American authorities that a special gift be made on this occasion to Polish astronomy. So the main purpose of Bob's visit to Warsaw was to find out what kind of a gift would be most appropriate, most effective. On May 17, we had a large <coughs> meeting in the historical building of the Warsaw University Observatory. It was attended by young representatives of, from all Polish astronomical institutions. Discussion was long, from time to time rather incoherent. Many ideas and many suggestions were made. There was even one to put a Polish telescope in Chile, which at that time was wishful thinking. And it took another 20 years to do it. Later that day, we sat in a bar of the Grand Hotel where Bob was staying, and drinking gin and orange juice, do I remember correctly, we tried to summarize that earlier discussion. And at one point, Bob said, you know, Joe, I think I know what you really need. What you need is a modern institute equipped with a good computer and oriented towards domestic and international cooperation. We will call it the Copernicus Center, the objective astronomical was at the playground. A few months later, Professor Odell accepted new demanding responsibilities by becoming the Deputy Director for Science of the Marshall Space Flight Center in Hansen, Alabama, and Project Scientist for the Large Space Telescope. But in spite of those demanding duties, he continued to devote quite a lot of his time, of his energy, and all of his heart to the idea of the Copernicus Astronomical Center, making our dream reality. So today, on this special occasion, I'm sure I will be speaking on behalf of all of us when I simply say, Thank you.
quite accurately, with one exception, that Joseph Mack and Borden Kuczynski, before I ever arrived, had the idea, and I know that's true because it was, I saw them right. And it wasn't the, that they set me up, <coughs> but rather it was a, a thing that sim simply happened because it was so natural. In my case, uh, the sense of support for Polish astronomy came through knowing that the young Polish astronomers were good contacts and no art of particular art. Joseph Smith, Mordem Kuczynski, Andrzej Kwaszczak, uh, Zeminski, Zembalski, uh, Stavakowski, all of those difficult to pronounce names, not all of whom are here, but are, can be here. That convinced me that Polish astronomy had a, a bright future and something worth working hard to to help them. Thanks for this. Ha, ha, ha.